Hey, this is Dan from LearningCameras.com, and here I've got both the 5D Mark III and the Canon 6D. And basically what we're going to be doing is taking a look at how these compare with each other. Now, both of these qualities have excellent build quality. The 5D 3 is going to have a fully metal chassis on this one, while the 6D is just mostly on that. But either way, both of these cameras feel great. Uh, the Canon 60 is a little bit smaller in the hand. It still feels good, pretty comfortable, even if you have bigger hands. The 5D Mark III is a much fuller feel, but it definitely comes with some extra weight to it. So holding this with one hand is a little more difficult, whereas holding this with one hand is very, very simple. So uh, really, if you're looking for a travel size light camera, still want some great build quality, the 60 is going to be a little bit better for you. If you don't mind the little bulkier, bigger camera, uh, this, the 5D Mark III is going to be a little bit better for you. This is going to take a little bit more of a pounding, a little bit more weather resistant than the 60 on that one. Now taking a look around the uh, camera, some of the big differences I noticed is the depth of field preview button, which is right here on the 5D Mark III. Very easy to press with either hand if you're holding the camera. It's very big and it's helpful if you're going to program this button. I like to program it between single shot and servo focus and it works really well for me. This is easy to hit on this camera, whereas on the 60, it's very, very small, very tough to find. You're not going to be able to hit it with your right hand. Only your left hand around the lens would be the only one that would be able to hit that camera. Now when we take a look at the top, the screens on them are going to show a lot of the same information, but we do have some different dials. We have the dual dials on the 5D Mark III, whereas the Canon 60 is only going to be a single dial. Now the only thing that's going to be missing on here that I really wish I had is a white balance button. There is no white balance button on the top of the 6D. No way to change that without hitting Q in the menu to go into that. You actually cannot even change the set button to function as a white balance button so you can have quick access to changing those settings. No quick way to change that on the Canon 6D, whereas in the 60D, or the 5D Mark III, there are plenty of good ways in order to change that. Now, taking a look at the back, uh, you're going to have a very similar setup for most of the buttons uh, that are going to be controlling. The difference will be the playback buttons. Traditionally, Canon has kept these away from this left side if you were going to have a flip out screen. But both of these uh, do not have a flip out screen. Also, you're only getting a 3 inch screen, whereas you're getting a 3.2 inch on the 5D Mark III. So you're getting a little bit bigger screen on that. Now, you're going to be missing some controls. You know, a lot of them are, are not really controls that I use all the time. Some of your right buttons, some of the rate buttons, thing like that. Those are not buttons that I commonly use, not anything that I'm I'm ashamed at missing on that. The only thing I do wish that I had is I, I do use this uh, programmable uh, button up here, this MFN, this function button, and that sometimes works well. You can program it to a variety of settings. You do lose that with the Canon 60. Not a big deal on that, just a little bit. Now something I wish I didn't lose is the jog wheel right here can be very helpful, especially for quick changing of the focus points. Now you only have 11 on the 6D and you have 61 I believe it is on the 5D Mark III but it is definitely helpful for changing those no matter how many you have and we do miss that on the 60. We had it on the 70. I wish they had kept that same design and just put that full frame sensor in that but they chose not to. Now when it comes to the focus points on there there is going to be a huge difference between both of these cameras. There's 11 focus points here on 60, 61, I believe, on this one with uh, just over 40 of them cross-type focus sensors on this. Five dual cross-type focus uh, points on here. So you're really going to have a much better focus system on the 5D Mark III than you do with the 60, which only has one cross-type focus system and that's a focus point, and that's it. That's the best you're going to do on the 60. That was really a weakness in my use. I was seeing that uh, I was getting good focus on the center point on the 6D, but depending on the subject, if it got a little bit dark or if it was kind of a common thread pattern, then I was not able to focus with any of the outside points on the 6D. Also, all of the points on the 6D were right around the center of the frame, whereas on the 5D Mark III, they were spread out entirely. I rarely found a time that I have to focus and recompose on the 5D Mark III. On the 60, that happened all the time. Now, I actually disable all of the non cross type focus points on the Canon 5D Mark III because those are so good and they're so spread out through the frame, I don't even find the need to do that. 
because of that, I almost never find a subject I cannot focus on on the 5D Mark III, whereas on the 6D there were a couple uh, problems that I had focusing on issues either in low light or on common thread patterns, but really only using the outside focus points on that. Now both of them are going to give you some pro features like uh, lens control for uh, if your lens is close focusing or something like that, you can adjust for that. Also you're going to have a lot of magnification options on that to, to control when you hit the magnification button after you've taken that picture. You can zoom straight into 100% to where you focus, to the center of the frame, wherever you want on that. So you do lose the file naming ability on the 6D. Disappointed in that because sometimes you shoot with more than one body or someone might have another 6D and it's nice to be able to name your camera something completely different so that you don't get confused in the files with other cameras. Um, also you do get up to seven on both of these cameras of the exposure bracketing on auto and that's nice to see. I did not think that we would have that on the 6D. It's nice to see that on the 6D. So overall, uh, both of these cameras worked very well other than changing the focus settings. Uh, that was the big difference on that. Now speaking of focus settings, even setting just in the menu, setting some of those options on that, I did have some issues on the 60. It does not give you any predetermined uh, options on that, no auto modes or anything like that. So you're going to have to go in and fine tune and it's not very good in the menu at explaining what each of those does. You do have presets in the 5D Mark III which seems like it should be the opposite way around but and, and the explanations are a little bit better for explaining what each of those things does. Now here's a big difference between them. You do get Wi-Fi and GPS included on the 6D. You get none of that on the 5D Mark III. The only thing that you get is the ability to add it uh, in a module on the side of the camera. GPS really is not a big deal to me. I don't really use it that much. I don't see a lot of needs that you would have to have it. But Wi-Fi uh, does have a lot of features to it. I was able to completely control this camera without using any extra accessories. Straight from my phone, I was able to see a live preview of what was going on on my phone. It wasn't that difficult to navigate. The app wasn't that great looking, but it functioned properly. And I see a lot of functions for this as people get a hold of that technology and are able to design apps and other things that will work for this camera on that. So that was a big advantage on this. Uh, for this one. Now as far as ports go, both of them are going to have a mic port, both of them are going to have manual audio control. You're going to have the ability to do the manual audio control while filming on the 5D Mark III. You're also going to have a headphone out which you do not have on the 6D. I found my movie recording was much easier to do on the 5D Mark III. If you're looking for movie recording, I would definitely choose the 5D Mark III over the 6D because of some of those manual options on there. Very easy to change. You also have the ability to use the scroll wheel to silently adjust some of those options when recording if audio is sensitive. Also on that, you don't get the option of having the flip screen on this, so there really isn't a big advantage to going with the 60 other than to save a little bit of money maybe. So. Uh, Overall though, both of these cameras served very well and if it wasn't for that, let me tell you a big feature too is you're going to have a single SD card slot on the 60. I don't mind using SD cards, they're very nice, convenient, they plug right out of my laptop. I do have dual cards on the 5D Mark III. That's huge for me because I do not like to shoot anything important like a wedding or something along those lines, even an important vacation without having backup of both of those cards. I love having both the compact flash and the SD because the SD plugs in right into my laptop. I don't have to have a card reader with me. I can always have those pictures or movie files downloaded on my laptop without any extra hardware. And then I keep my CF card as a backup for everything. Some people do it the opposite way around. Most of the time I just use the SD card. Those are a little bit cheaper too, so if I wore them down, they don't have pins or anything, but if you ever wore that card down, they're much cheaper to replace than a compact flash card. So that was a big feature of the 5D Mark III that I felt was missing with the 60. Nikon allows it in both of their cameras. Um, in the D600 and the D800, both of them have uh, have that ability to have dual cards. I don't know why they left it off on the 6D. You also have it on the D7000 with the Nikon camera, so it was unfortunate that you saw it on this and not on the 60. Uh, now the other thing that I thought I was missing on this camera was uh, a flash. Now I didn't really need it on the 5D Mark III, not a lot of uses for it. Normally if I'm traveling, this is a big camera, bulky camera, I don't mind having some off-camera lighting. 
On this, the only reason I picked it up most of the time was to have a smaller, more portable camera. And in that, I preferred not having any off-camera lighting, either to be able to trigger some other lights if I did have some lights with me to help with focusing in low light, it will work for that. Or sometimes you're in a pinch and a, and a little bit of fill flash, it might be a little bit uh, of a help just from the straight camera flash. You could just add a little bit on there and that helps. So, but let's take a look at the results and we'll see what they deliver. Now one of the tests I really wanted to do with both of these cameras is a low light focus test. I wanted to see because I've heard a lot about the 6D being able to focus to negative 2 or negative 3 EV, Canon 5D maybe not focusing that in that low light environment. So I took both of these into indoors and had a dimmer switch and lowered that dimmer switch until there was virtually no light in the room. I'll tell you with both of these cameras I had no problem focusing in almost pitch black. The minute I moved the focus point away from the center, I had a lot of issues with the 6D. I was not picking up focus on a lot of objects. Now we were able, I'll show you the actual pictures and some of the settings we used. This is virtual blackness that we were recording on. So it was very good to see both of these cameras doing such a good job in that low light environment. Now I will say again, I was only able to achieve that kind of focus with the center point on the 6D. The minute I changed it, no matter where my focus point was trying to focus on, I was not able to achieve that. So I'm not sure if it was just because it wasn't a cross type or if only that sensitivity is just that center point focus. But either way, I was having a lot of issues on the 6D once I got in that. So even when it comes to low light focus, I'll still put the 5D Mark III as the king on that one. I didn't go any lower than the exposure that I got on that because realistically I couldn't see as it was so there was no need I felt to go any lower than that. In real life I don't think you'll be shooting in low light any lower than that for a scene like this. Now when we take a look at the dynamic range test, uh, this was a big one for me. I wanted to see if this Canon 60 was going to do anything different than Canon has typically done on their cameras. This has been a Nikon world in dynamic range. Their, their cameras are unbelievable compared to everything out there. You were really able to push those shadows up unbelievably, uh, pull those highlights down, get a ton of dynamic range. The shadows still look great no matter what you do to them. This has been a weakness for me on the Canon 5D Mark III. I have taken this into uh, times where I had a very bright sky and a very dimly lit foreground on the ground. And if I push those shadows too much, it got very ugly and I find myself having to go to HDR or something along those lines in order to gain some of that detail back in the ground to what my eyes were seeing or to what the scene was supposed to look like. Now on the 60, uh, when we take the picture of the outside, and we push them, or we take a look at both of them together. They both look very, very similar in what they're able to deliver. Maybe a tiny bit advantage to the 6D on that. When we began to push the shadows on there, both of them pushed to about the same. The images looked very, very similar. When we zoom in to 100%, the 6D looked a tiny bit cleaner to me on the 5D Mark III. But unfortunately, this is still not a uh, strength area for Canon. I don't like my 5D Mark III when I push those shadows. I found that the 6D was just a tiny bit better, so I'm still not a fan of the Canon cameras when it comes to pushing those shadows. You start to get ugly when you do that. So neither camera produced anything really worthwhile compared to what I've seen from the Nikon D600 on this. I had that camera for a long time. It was really the king of that kind of a test on that. Nothing compared to it even on this. Now another test that we did on these cameras is a low light test. When we took the Canon 5D Mark III into the low light world, it was an amazing camera on that. One of the first Canon cameras to get to some of these 12,800 ISO range and still look usable at most sizes. Now the 60, uh, we took them both into this low light environment and both went side by side, look very, very similar when they're viewed at normal distances. When we begin to creep in at 100%, they're very good at 1600 ISO. When we begin to take that up to 3200 ISO, there's a little bit of difference between there. The 60 is beginning to have a slight advantage, but once again, it's only slight. At 6400 ISO, there is a difference. I'd say it's a, maybe a third of a stop. And uh, by 12,800 ISO, it is still probably a third of stop difference on that. The shadow areas are the areas that we notice the most. Uh, it's cleaner in the shadows than the Canon 5D Mark III. 
Uh, they also looked a little cleaner in the shadows when we boosted the shadows in dynamic range. So on both of these cameras, we're seeing great results. I will give a 60, probably about a third of a stop more ability uh, when it comes to low light. Now when we take a look at the video from both of these cameras, when we put them side by side together, I'm seeing quite a bit of difference between the 5D Mark III and the 60. The 60 looks considerably sharper, both in the foreground and the background element. So it's not a focus issue. That's what I thought at first because the difference is so large. And even when we take a look at the still frame capture from that scene, uh, we're definitely able to see the differences in sharpness between the two. The 60 might not have a filter or something on, on the sensor because I'm definitely seeing something that, that seems uh, a ridiculously large improvement uh, between these two sensors, considerably sharper. So this would be great if you're looking for video. We are definitely seeing something much better from Canon on this. However, the 60 is still a little bit lacking on some of these video features. You don't have headphone out. You don't have the ability to silently change the audio. You don't have dual SD card slots or dual card slots in general. And so there's a lot of features that we are, are seeing that are missing from this. The 5D Mark III also has announced uh, for HDMI out uh, without any compression, uncompressed straight out. And that should be coming in a firmware upgrade in the next one to three months from Canon. That has not been announced for the 6D yet, so we'll see if that comes. But definitely some higher end features in the 5D Mark III, but the picture in the 6D looks amazing comparatively. So just a quick review of what we've seen. As far as the body goes, uh, if you're looking for a Canon 60D and you don't mind spending the money, the 60 is an unbelievable upgrade. You're getting professional style quality, uh, quality that even beats the 5D Mark III in various ways all in a small package like the Canon 60D. If you're looking for a professional camera though, there were just a lot of features that I found missing from the 6D that made it almost impossible to use in any kind of setting like that. Uh, we're talking about the dual SD card slots that was a huge feature of the 5D Mark III. Some of the controls that are just lacking uh, that you definitely need there if you're entering that kind of a setting. I didn't find those there. I find it even difficult to use as, as kind of a second body for that type of situation because it is missing those features. But however, it is unbelievably great when it comes to picture quality. We're definitely seeing the 5D Mark III picture quality even a hair better in certain circumstances. On the flip side, there is virtually nothing that the 6D does uh, that the 5D Mark III doesn't do just as good. We're talking about just as good on the picture quality. Low light is just as good. Uh, I mean, the differences are so minor between them that there is really no reason that I would ever pick up a 6D instead of a 5D Mark III unless I was really just trying to save every pound that I could. Even then, you're still going to want to carry some off-camera lighting because there is no onboard lighting if you don't need it. And also, this is an interchangeable lens camera, so most of the lenses you're going to be taking around multiple lenses with you, things of that nature. So all in all, I, you know, I really don't mind taking the extra pound for something like the 5D Mark III and having that with me. Now, when it comes to video, it was a difference in quality. I was seeing considerably better quality and sharpness on the 5, in the 6D than the 5D Mark III. However, I'm uh, missing a lot of the features that I love about my 5D Mark III versus any other camera out there. So I, I'm not sure if I'm ready to give up all of those features yet for that little bit of gain and sharpness. I prefer to just add a little bit of sharpness in post and I get almost the identical image on there. So uh, I'm not sure if I'm seeing a huge reason to go with the 6D versus another camera other than to save a little bit of money on that. Now the 5D Mark III has come down in price recently. So the differences between them are probably only about 800 to a thousand dollars maybe. And even then you can get the 5D Mark III on a, on a steal for right around 2,700 at, at this time of this review. So we'll see what the 60 does. It'll probably go down in price too. Overall, both of them are great cameras. Usability wise on the focus system, that was definitely the weakest part for me of the 6D. Not having a, a more robust focus system, I wasn't getting a lot of great results on the outside focus points at all. And the 5D Mark III having such an unbelievable focus system made the difference between the two of them seem a, a lot more apparent on that. So that was the biggest drag for me of the 6D versus the 5D Mark III. And also I wish they would have included the second memory 
memory card slot in that. Build quality, they were both great. I mean, obviously the 5D Mark III is a little bit better, but the 60 is gonna be great enough for almost everyone out there, unless you're taking your camera into some really rough conditions. Uh, overall, it was a great camera to use, um, picture quality wise. However, I was just struggling with some of those settings. Now, for those who are shooting with Nikon, the Nikon D600 does give you that extra card slot and a couple more memory or uh, focus points on there. A lot of them are still that single type and not the, the dual cross type or cross type focus points on there. And the Nikon does have all the cross types right around the center, but it does beat the, Ni the Canon out on both of those measures. However, video on the Nikon was very, very tough to use, nowhere compared to what it was on the 60, especially nowhere compared to the usability of the 5D Mark III and the options that the 5D Mark III gives. So it's a tough choice on that. If you're, if you're taking pictures, it's hard to argue with the dynamic range that Nikon gives you on that and also some of the features that Nikon had, such as the dual memory card slots and the little better focusing system, might be enough to sway those Nikon users or Canon users who are just deciding over to the Nikon side from the Canon 6D. However, the Canon 6D held its own image quality wise against the 5D Mark III, and I just wish it wasn't missing those features. So you can decide if those features are big for you, or if you don't mind losing them and getting a smaller, more portable body, you uh, also have to add in that you do get the Wi-Fi and GPS without having to add anything else on the Canon. If that's a big feature to you, the Wi-Fi was great for me. The GPS is kind of a, a non-issue for me because I don't really use it too much. But if you find any need for those, that would be a no-brainer for you because you don't have to add it on and it's going to be built into the body. So it really just depends on what you're looking for. All around, decent camera, a couple of missing things that, that take it away from being a beast.